come sit in the seat of honor. <laughs> I always love it where all the tall girls wear the really tall shoes too. <laughs> like, come on, we're all trying to catch up to you, and then you throw the stilts on and like forget it. Um, but Tiffany, I am. It's my honor and pleasure to actually be sharing some, you know, affectionate stories about Tiffany. I've known Tiffany for a long, long time. She's about five years old. Um, but I didn't know early in her life that she actually is a car and history aficionado. Like she's brought those two worlds together. Um, as she and her family were traveling back to see her grandparents in Wisconsin, um, John, I guess probably does a lot of traveling, gets an upgrade on the car, right? And they get like one of those big sedans you know, so they're cruising Wisconsin and <laughs> driving from the airport. And it's like a two-hour drive. So there's Tiffany sliding back and forth in the back seat like she's being chauffeured, you know, like it's, you know, the big shot seat in the back. And she's trying out all the little knobs and whistles and bells. And she finds out that this car is named after a president. Okay, so you guys know which car she's in now, right? All right. So, yeah, so she's in this car. So she's so enamored with this car, she, they get to the grandma's house, she pops out, she runs and gives her grandma and grandma a hug, and she says, I just rode in a Washington. <laughs> Tip, just to help you out, like not knowing what cars you might be, you know, seeing up in San Francisco when you're up in school, I, I printed out a list of the presidents. <laughs> okay, so just in case, so you can kind of keep those straight, like Washington was the first one, Lincoln's like, you know, it was kind of in the middle, but now, you know, time's moved on, so just, you know, so it, it was a Lincoln that you were in. Um, so, hey, Tiffany actually, actually last year was one of our lay leaders in worship, did an excellent job, so you might not know that she is naturally shy. Um, and um, she would use an economy of words when she was younger because she was afraid she might say something wrong. And when the rubber really met the road was in restaurants. She was super afraid to order the food that she wanted because she was afraid she'd say it wrong and then the restaurant would become like the soup Nazis and like kick them out. <laughs> so she was always like, just tense and anxious, just, you know, a grilled cheese. Oh my gosh, did I say that right? I don't know. Shoot, should I have said like medium well done grilled cheese? I don't know. So she, yeah, had a really tough time, but then she kind of grew up and out of that and she was a lay leader for us. And now to turn the tables completely, another, you know, a woman of surprises, she works for Porky's Pizza, <laughs> where people have to order food from her now. So now she can hang up on that. Ah, you said it wrong. <laughs> So, she yeah. does very well is she paces herself very well. Um, when she was younger, or even now, I think they may still have a tradition of doing this, where um, the drums live, uh, they're near the Ralph's Shopping Center, and there's a bagel place, La Tida, over there. And so they would make it a family tradition of walking over to La Tida to get bagels and whatever. And so Tiffany would typically make the journey there, but really didn't want to make the walk home. And so she would be like, hey mom, can you go grab the car and pick me up? Like, oh, okay, so Deanna's gonna walk all the way home, pick the car up and come get her. So usually her walk home consisted of riding on mom or dad's back, um, trying to get home, because she was not gonna make that one mile trek back, because she was pacing herself. For cross country, she joined the cross country <laughs> team when she was in high school. Um, track and field, cross country, she'd run five to seven miles when she wouldn't even make the one mile trek with her family. So I got you a pedometer. So you can pace yourself in college so you know the distance and how many steps it's gonna take and so you can, you know, just monitor that so we're not like overdoing it. Although it came out very clearly in the reflections this morning as to how apparently competitive our youth group can get. Um, we have several fierce competitors, and it doesn't help that some of our advisors, like Spencer and Brian, are also fiercely competitive. Yeah, cheaters too. And so, you know, wrap with the anti. Um, and you would expect this, I think, obviously from men. Sometimes a competitive nature. You have no idea. Okay, Tiffany is an unbelievable competitor. 
especially when it comes to games like Electronic Hangman. Um, the very first year that we went to Calvin Press together, <laughs> Tiffany, oh no, I'm getting to Uno, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany had uh, this cute little electronic hangman game, and so she showed me how to play it, and then I would play it, and she goes, oh, how many letters did it take you? Like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, I'm a failure if I like did it too many letters. But then we found out late at night, we were starting to play Uno, she is cutthroat. Cutthroat Uno player, unbelievable. She will do anything to get to Uno. And then if she's not like, if you don't say Uno like the second you're trying to lay the card down, oh, you didn't say Uno, hey, pick up four cards. Ooh. So I made the mistake, oh Lord have mercy, I made the mistake of teaching her firehouse rules of Uno. Oh, I was collecting cards for days. So to go with the car theme and the Uno theme, I got you your very own Cars Uno deck. So you're your roommates in the dorm. Um, the other thing at Calvin Crest, though, this is where I Calvin Crest was where I learned how competitive Tiffany is um, in the game of cards. Also, apparently, in mud fights. Oh, oh, that was the fight. Wait, wait. Do I just push this little button? That wasn't your fault. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, this is Tiffany's competitor face. See that? Okay, you see that? I know. So, um, and this is after the mud fight. Yeah, well, again, the one that she was in. You notice how the kids are like completely covered. Tiffany's only partially covered. That's because she spent her time wasting the kids with mud. Um, the other thing, I, I don't know, I tr I, she was so easy to get her to give me the information about her Dunderhead Awards. We, I actually had to send text messages out to the youth group because none of us could remember why Tiffany had gotten the Dunderhead. We knew she had gotten it because I remember seeing her with the hat on, but we couldn't remember why. So I sent out a text and I got some responses. And then we realized, and Brian wasn't here to confirm, Sometimes people get the Dunderhead because we make up stories about them. Um, and Tiffany was probably one of the ones we had to make it up. So um, originally we thought it was because Tiffany was the one, when you're down in Mexico, sometimes they put dogs on the roof of houses. Um, and they, they put the dogs on the roofs because the dogs are in heat, okay? But um, I thought we'd given Tiffany the Dunderhead because she asked, how does that cool them off? <laughs> but that wasn't it. Um, but then she did offer to me, oh, she goes, I think it was because I had said, like, somebody told me how to say I'm sorry, it's lo siento, blah, blah, blah. But the way she said it, how did you say it? No, oh, because Andrew told me to say lo siento, but then I thought it was like, say lo siento, like the whole thing. Oh, so she said, say lo siento, instead of, like, dropping the English word say and just, Lo siento. She said, say lo siento. But that wasn't it either. That wasn't why she got the Dunderhead either. She actually ratted on herself. Um, we were in San Francisco and we were taking the public transportation and so we were underground and there was water dripping from the tunnel that we were in. She goes, oh, it's raining outside. <laughs> we're underground. It's sunny. <laughs> that was why she actually did receive the Dunderhead for that particular time. But Tiffany was easy for us to make up stories and then people go, oh yeah, she must have done it, yay! <laughs> um, Tiffany is so thorough though. You heard the kids talk about the boot camp confirmation class. Tiffany actually did confirmation class twice. <laughs> she wasn't quite so sure about everything the first time. I probably scared her, so she decided to do it again. And so that time it took, and so we were glad to have her come and join our church. Um, but you also need to know that Tiffany has got a very, very big heart. Um, always willing to help, always willing to be involved, especially in um, organizations and um, places that want to reach out and help other people. And she was actually instrumental, I don't know if you guys know the whole Coney campaign, um, K-O-N-Y, um, about trying to get rid of some of the, the warlords that are out in Africa. And Tiffany was one of the first people on that, sending out videos, having it go viral, and she was really a part of that and part of the stuff that's going on at school, helping all those things. So I, at least I got it from her, San Francisco State. Although I thought it was gonna be by way of University of Hawaii. Because um, last summer she came home from Hawaii, she goes, I'm going to University of Hawaii, that's where I'm going. And then she goes, oh yeah, I'm going to San Francisco. I'm like, what, what happened to Hawaii? <laughs> so, what? Oh, I thought you guys were like telling me what happened to it. <laughs> uh, so, 
<laughs> Tiffany will be majoring in cinematography, or is that right? Cinema? And I don't know, does that mean like you just major in going to the movies? Because like, <laughs> um, I don't think she wants to be on the, like, you know, in front of the camera, so I guess it's behind the camera. And so, anyhow, we wish Tiffany well in her journey and um, pace yourself. Okay, and uh, make sure that you beat all your roommates in Uno. Thank you.